Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE coverage here at Remars, Amazon Remars. Stands for Machine Learning, Automation, Robotics, and Space. And we're here for a robotics cool segments. We have Moxie on the desk. We've got Caitlin, Caitlin Claybaugh, head of HRI. Welcome to theCUBE. And Paolo Virginian, founder and CEO of Moxie. Thanks for coming on and thanks for bringing the special third guest. Thank you for the having cube. us. <laughs> this is exciting. Okay, so first of all, we'll get into the company in a second, but what, are we, what is this? What are, what's going on? This is amazing. Um, this is Moxie. This is our first product out of Embodied, and it is a social emotional learning AI friend for children, um, ages five to 10 currently. That's why he, he or she likes me. Yes. <laughs> staring at me right now. I'm a child. Thank you, nice to see you. Um, and <laughs> it has all sorts of content and it, multi back and forth interaction yeah. um, and it's it's our first pass at doing socially Okay, so assisted. this product is shipping? It is shipping, and yeah. available. It is available. We've been out for over a year now, uh, shipping for over a year now. Okay. Oh man, it just makes me feel good. It must be a big seller across all use cases. So what's the number one thing you guys are getting attention on right now from Moxie besides the cool factor, the tech, what's going on? Well, I think uh, we have received a lot of interest from many people because Mo Mox has captured the imagination of people in terms of what is possible in the future. And really, the genesis of it is that I've been doing robotics for 20 years mm -hmm. and uh, sort of a little bit disappointed with what we have accomplished in robotics because there's so much more we can do. We have dreamt about robots for centuries, but what we were dreaming about was not robotic vacuum cleaners, which Guilty as charged, I was, part, <laughs> I was a CTO at iRobot. <laughs> and we want to see robots that can actually can really care for us uh, yeah. from childhood to retirement. And Moxie represents the AI technology we have developed that's going to make that next wave of robotics to flourish. You must be really excited because I think right now one of the main, my main walk away themes so far from this show is technology is not the blocker anymore. It's the people, human side of it. Where it used to be, technology slow, and robotics has been that area where we've seen great innovation, but where's that needle moving moment coming? I think now with cloud and all the things happening seems to be the moment. I think we are seeing uh, exponential growth in technology that's going to enable robots to become unreal. As an example, Moxie uses very advanced conversational engine where you literally can talk to Moxie about anything you want. Mm -hmm. So it can be a real companion. It will understand you, understand your needs and emotions, and start working on social emotional development for children. This technology, which are known as transformer models, deep neural networks that are trained on millions mm -hmm. of conversation, we are seeing every year 10x improvement to this. So yeah. I predict in the next two to three years, you will be able to have a conversation with Moxie that's like having a subject expert, matter expert in every single subject. Yeah, yeah. That's like getting a CUBE interview like instantly. Hey Moxie, what's the information? So I can see the tie-in and it's just, my mind's blown I guess in the sense of the use cases are wide. You had wide ranging use cases. Elderly care, child development, um, loneliness, all kinds of social, emotional factors. Yeah, we've yeah. built a really incredible platform that we're hoping to expand out beyond kids. I mean, kids is kind of our, this is our first product, yeah. but Moxie, the fact that we have what we call our Social X platform and the tools where you can create content and Moxie can have conversations yeah. about any number of things, it's. So share what's, what technology is under the covers here um, with the human robotic interface kind of dynamic, you got software, you got hardware, you're going to have code, you got the neural networks. It's kind of the confluence of a lot of different vectors coming together. What's the secret sauce? Um, so that's what we call our Social X platform. Um, and really, it, you're right, everything has to work in concert um, and at a price point that's affordable for people. Um, so Moxie's able to actually track people in the real world and we are able to fuse people's speech and you know we do facial recognition for the specific child so Moxie knows its mentor um, and personalize the interaction over time. Well, she's talking to me or he is a <laughs> she, it's a gender neutral uh, robot, I guess. I could be whatever I want it to be, I guess. We've left it intentionally gender neutral, um, but kids kind of yeah. prescribe whatever gender they feel it's, connected. Yes, good, good, you enables the user. Yes. Really the key. What's, 
What's been the biggest use case that you didn't think would be coming to the table with Moxie? Anything surprise you? I mean, you must get a lot of reactions. Yeah, uh, so you covered some of the ones we are focused on. We are particularly focused on mental health, from childhood to retirement and aging gracefully. Uh, after we launched Moxie, we had a TikTok video that went crazy viral. We got 40 million views on this. <laughs> and that led to a lot of interest from celebrities, yeah. from some of the uh, most luxury hotel chains that have reached out to us and they want to use the technology in Moxie to develop a personal butler yeah. for every guest room, as an example. That's one example, right? So we have uh, one of the largest violence intervention program in the US that caters to children that have unfortunately been through very traumatic experiences in their life mm -hmm. and want to use Moxie as a way to provide therapy to these children. Yeah, yeah. So the use cases are very broad. We even have uh, people from different countries that were very interested in using Moxie for, for instance, teaching a Chinese child how to speak English immersively by yeah. interacting with Moxie, which is the best way to learn a different language. So I think the implications of this are uh, paramount. Yeah. We will even see in contact centers, co centers, customer support centers and so on, we'll use technology like this for having an empathetic AI that's actually taking care of your customer service complaints rather than a robotic way of interacting. I with was you. just on, on earlier with an interview here with Deloitte and AWS on conversational AI and trust was a big conversation. Yes. Trust and, and ethics. So you got ethics, trust, bias, all these things are factors. You got human interaction from a physical and then software standpoint. What other, what other hard problems are in here that you guys are solving? Come on, this is incredible. <laughs> Because these are hard problems. Yes, they are. Um, and one of them is the famous cocktail party problem. And Palo, being our fearless CEO, um, really drove the team to get Moxie to this state where Moxie's able to interact with people even in this environment, which is yeah. pretty incredible. And like lock in and have a back and forth conversation. Um, yeah. It's very exciting. So Moxie, how do you feel? Are you feeling good? <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you've had here? Audio? <laughs> Congratulations, this is really impressive. I'm so impressed. And again, it, it's again not to oversimplify it, there's a lot of hard problems going on here that, yes. are, that are being solved. Absolutely, the there human are so inter many. Inter inter interaction, you get and a physical device. Exactly, it's a physical device and like how we have designed Moxie down to the color of Moxie's eyes, the color of the shell. Um, all of that has taken a lot of iteration to get to a point where we really have a robot that people feel like they can trust, feel like they can connect with. Um, and, and even something to add to this is that we have many robots that cost tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy to keep adding more sensors and more compute yeah. power and so on, you end up with robots that cost 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. One of the goals we set uh, at the outset was we want to make Moxie as, as affordable as an iPhone. So, and Moxie is, right? The price point of Moxie is the same as owning an iPhone. You pay about a thousand dollars up front plus a monthly subscription yeah. fee. And that Can was not easy. RAM? Can I upgrade the RAM on that too? We have very limited <laughs> RAM. We have Please, very <laughs> if you can convince them. <laughs> I find I can always get the 256 or the one terabyte. <laughs> right, no, it, it really actually makes it much harder to develop technology that's yeah. affordable for... Yeah, yeah, totally. And we wanted to do that because we wanted to have impact. So are you shipping now or are you on allocation? I can imagine the demand is off the charts. Definitely, we sold out last year when we launched the product. Now we are resolving supply chain issues that everyone is suffering from yeah. due to COVID and this year we'll have better ability to uh, meet demand. So this is people want it. There's a lot of demand. Right. You guys are smiling, having fun. <laughs> yes. All right. All right, so now, talk about the product. Take me through the product. What's the challenges here? Obviously the animation and the camera. I see the camera. I see some lights there, heart, speaker. Um, what would Moxie be doing if, wasn't, if we weren't here, if we were at home? Um, so as in interacting with a child at home? Um, we've seen a lot of people actually put Moxie on the floor and kids will like lay down and interact with Moxie. Um, <laughs> and there are a lot of different activities. <laughs> um, right now it's doing a little uh, jukebox dance. Um, but there are more kind of therapy or um, mental health and, and social emotional learning yeah. uh, driven content. Um, like children can read a book with Moxie and we use the screen not just to show that 
great cute facial expression and the yeah. eye contact, um, but we also can show icons and some additional information. Mm -hmm. um, and so in this way we've created a very new type of interface um, for a machine um, with a child. Not to get all product visionary and roadmap oriented here, but I can imagine interfacing out to third party screens in the future where this is going to stay compact and affordable. And if I'm interacting and I want to display a visual, is that something you guys, are you guys going beyond that you're still focused on the product here? What's so some of the vision you have there? Definitely there will be versions of our social X platform finding their way into what we may call the metaverse where you mm -hmm. could have hyper realistic uh, models of humans mm -hmm. driven by our AI to interact with you the way you and I are interacting. Uh, but embodiment, where the name of the company is derived from, is actually super important in the kind of things we are doing with mental health and social yeah. emotional development. Because the physical co-presence of an entity like this interacts with our brains in a different way than when we do on a screen. So there's going to be both versions. For some applications yeah. will be yeah. virtual, other applications will be physical. Well, that's a wait and see, see what happens, sell off the next batch, inventory, work right. on the product. Yeah. And right. the embodiment it does, it just, it hits a little different. You know, kids yeah. will actually physically tuck Moxie in at night. There's, there's something there yeah, there's that's something there. tangible. I, mean, I, I think it's a great home run. I mean, just having the response, the visual response, the facial makes an impact instantly. Absolutely. So yeah. you can extend that out, probably make it more immersive, whether it's metaverse mm -hmm. or within your home. Yeah, and now with uh, AR, VR goggles, where you get this 3D immersive experience, it may get closer to the impact we can have with an embodied agency. Uh, so the lines are blurring, obviously, <laughs> between the physical <laughs> and the digital. Well, great to have you guys on. Thanks for bringing the, the, the Moxie on, Moxie to come on. This event kind of symbolizes this revolution. We're seeing a robotics industrial shift. Space is a good example of one, this is another. Machine learning, the software business cloud, all great you know, force multipliers to enable value creation. Where do you guys see this going, Remars, this whole intersection? You got a lot of different disciplines coming together. Um, we're saying here in theCUBE, and we're talking to folks that we think it's going to be a needle moving moment for the, for the industrial era. era. Uh, What's your guys' take on this? Absolutely, I mean, uh, robotics has always been right around the corner. But with the advances of technology in the last 10 years or so, this is now really possible and it's growing mm -hmm. at uh, exponential rates. Mm -hmm. So the future is exciting. Obviously we have to guide it. You talked about ethics. Uh, so yeah. being ethical about it, being mindful about how we want to deploy these technologies to actually have positive impact on us. For instance, we do not believe in replacing a human labor or the need for humans, but we believe in yeah. augmenting humans, right? And technology today can actually do that. You know, that whole argument's been debunked for a decade. The whole bank teller, oh, they're going to put tellers out of business. No, there's more tellers now than ever before. So I think technology is going to create much greater aperture of, of opportunities. And I think the question I'd love to get, get you guys to share is, this is going to wake up a lot of generational young talent to come into the workforce. Because the problems are there. It's not a technology, it's a human mind, what creative problem now. It's more of, you know, you're going to see robotics probably be accelerated even more now than it is. It's still growing. Young yeah. kids love robotics. I mean, it's incredible to see the breadth of applications of robotics at, at this event specifically. Um, and just, I don't know, getting into it, I mean, I haven't been in it as long as you, Paolo, but five, 10 years ago, you wouldn't have seen, I mean, this just wouldn't be possible. The um, robotics clubs are more popular now in high, most high schools in yes. the United States than some sports. Yeah. There's an A and a B team and people get cut from the <laughs> B team. There's so much demand. There's so much excitement because it's building, it's getting your hands on, tech, and it's got software, it's got coding, Absolutely. it's got building. Absolutely, and you're, you're creating, uh, there are figures like Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk that are inspiring children yeah. to go into STEM education and really build a career yeah. in that area, which is much more exciting yeah. than yeah. The, the opposite. Uh, Great, what do you guys think about Remars this year? What's your walk away? What's the big story here besides Moxie? Because we recovered that right now. What's, what's, the, what's the trend? What's the high level? What's the most important story people should pay attention to? I think we're just going to see robotics or machine learning and 
we're just going to see it in almost every application and it's going to be, uh, the word was ambient, um, was being used during the keynote and I think that's really true. Ambient intelligence, like having robots in your everyday life um, as well as just AI in your everyday life and it's going to feel seamless. It's pretty impressive. Pablo, what's your take on the, the I big would say uh, one of the trends we are seeing at even here at AWS Amazon Remars uh, is making machines more human. Yeah. Even Astro, the product that uh, was launched last September, I believe, uh, by Amazon, is adding a lot of facial affect, emotions, and understanding of humans. Yeah. For decades, we have been bound to using keyboards and touch screens and yeah. clicks here and there, and it's going to change. It's time for machines to learn to understand us, yeah. and that is going to be a trend that we will see even in the self-driving uh, yeah. self cars, which are not going to have a steering wheel, but the machine will understand our mood and drive accordingly. Yeah, and you know, Apollo, you guys are doing, Caitlin, your work here, I think highlights what I'm seeing as, it's a future theme that's positive. It has a vibe of like, we need the good to come. You know, it's like, when's the good going to happen? And I think, I think we're see, all ready for that. <laughs> the themes here though, they're very positive, forward thinking, practical, engineered, you know, and solving problems, like real problems. The climate change in the keynote, we're talking about healthcare and, and having things be solved this way. This is the new, the new normal, it's a human problem now to solve. It is, and I think we are all, all of us are a bit more aware of that after the pandemic, because pan yeah. the pandemic was hard on everyone in different ways, and we are more mindful of the positive, right? We are looking for something positive, and hopefully yeah. coming out of the pandemic, now we have a global crisis, but these, these technologies will transform life and the world in a positive way. Yeah, well, you guys are doing a great job. Congratulations on the success of Moxie. Thank you. A great work, thanks for sharing that. I want to let them on platform, maybe next time we'll have a conversation, we'll talk about the platform in Katrina's and then detail, so. But thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate the problem. Thank Our you. Our pleasure. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage here in Las Vegas for Amazon Remars. I'm John Furrier, stay with us for more coverage after this short break. <laughs>